last time on MasterChef Junior. The competition whipped into a frenzy. Tip. And it was an elimination challenge for the record books. Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington. With some mixed results. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. It's like eating a mouthful of salt. In the end, Rowan and Jules had to say goodbye to the MasterChef kitchen. Lift tonight. Sardines, liver, snails. This is so not gummy bears. It's a mystery box filled with the stuff of nightmares. Disgusting. I've never eaten kidneys before and I don't plan on it. Then, please make that rise and taste sumptuous and delicious. A baking challenge. Come on. With results you could only dream of. You hit it out of the park with this one. Did you try how good your cake is? Wow. You may be the smallest, maybe the youngest, but you can cook. One down, guys. Let's go. It's really great to be in the top eight. It's just so exciting. When I walked into the Junior Master Chef kitchen, I saw the box and I'm like, oh, snap. It's a mystery box challenge. Where's Sarah? <laughs> Why are you hiding down there? I thought we had a box of spaghetti you stand on. You on your tiptoes? That's it. Now I can see you. Welcome back, everybody. You are the top eight young home cooks in all of America. I'm feeling pretty confident because I won that first mystery box, but I still know that anything could happen. Is everyone ready for another phenomenal mystery box challenge? Yes, yes. yes chef! Great. As with every mystery box challenge, we're going to decide which three dishes we want to examine further. The person with the best dish will come into the pantry with us and get a game-changing advantage in the next round of this competition. On the count of three, lift those boxes. One, two, three, lift. Gummy bears. When I lift it up, I immediately step back by the stench and the looks of it. Under there, you have some wonderful ingredients <laughs> that all kids just love to eat. Liver, kidneys, snails, Brussels sprouts, sardines with their faces on them, Ew. olives, dates, fennel, artichokes, and the most incredibly stinky blue cheese. That sounds so good, doesn't it? No. No, no chef. 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 Oh, it's so nasty. How it's disgusting. The sardines had their heads on it, and they were, like, watching you. Oh, my god. Your 60 minutes starts now. It's now, I've never eaten kidneys before. It's pretty gross, but I'm going to uh, make deep fried kidneys with grilled artichokes, sauteed fennel, and an olive tapenade. Right now, I'm about to make a snail chowder. I do have a very sophisticated palate, I would say. I guarantee you none of my friends will probably touch or eat a snail. Today, I'm making a blue cheese souffle. Personally, I hate blue cheese, but I'm using it. So we're giving these youngsters the most miserable mystery box challenge in the history of this competition. Yeah. As a nine-year-old, what would you have been scared of? Uh, liver, kidney, snails, <laughs> you know, all those things. It's a tough box. <laughs> Alexander, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Chef. How what are, are you making? Um, I'm making a classic sticky toffee pudding. Uh, hold on a minute. You're going British. <laughs> I am. So what are you using for that mystery box that's going to be involved with this? The secret ingredient in the cake itself is the dates. And I'm also going to do it with yep. some candied fennel. You're candying fennel? Yes, I am. To serve with a sticky toffee pudding. Okay, Good luck. Thank you. I cannot wait to taste it. 
Sophia, how are we doing? I'm doing excellent. What scared you when you lifted up the box? Definitely the sardines, kidneys, and liver. All right, so what do we have? I'm making nettle soup with escargot. Escargot does not gross me out at all. All right, well, good luck. Thank you. 26 minutes left, guys, 26 minutes. Ooh. Right, Sarah, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Chef. Right, uh, what are you making? I'm making deep fried sardines with the heads on. OK, good. Um, with a Brussels sprout fennel salad. That sounds delicious. Careful. You're telling me to be careful. I like that. <laughs> huh? Thank you for that. There we are. Handle's not hot. Oh. Off you go. Push it down, push away, and flip it back. Good girl. Are you a big fan of sardines? Um, only when I cook them. Only when you cook them. And are you going to flour them, season them? Um, there's going to be crushed red pepper, cayenne, salt and pepper in the flour. OK. So they're going to get coated in Good. That. So are you a little bit nervous about cooking these sardines? No, chef. No? I'm Com very confident. Good luck. Thank you. 45 minutes gone. Last 15 minutes. Let's go. Ooh. Jack, how was that kidney? Surprisingly, I like it. Nice. Really great stuff out there. Extraordinary. Sophia is doing an escargot. I thought that was the devil in the box. I yeah, know, sure. I know. Big surprise. Dara is making a blue cheese souffle. I mean, honestly, when was the last time you saw a souffle in a Mr. Box chair? I was just going to say, have we ever seen somebody do one that no. they don't have to? No. It's kind of amazing wow. that these are 8 to 13-year-old cooks who have the perspective of global cuisine to yeah. be able to use these very difficult ingredients in such an right. intelligent way. And to come up with them out of nowhere. Guys, just under three minutes left. Under three minutes left. Dara, how are you feeling? Good. Are they going to come out? Hi. I think, yeah. Have you prayed yet? <laughs> no. Every time I put a souffle in the oven, I always pray. OK. Dear God of souffle, please make that rise and taste sumptuous and delicious. Good luck. Thank you. Just under 90 seconds to go. Let's go, guys. Come on, finish your touches. Time's running out, and I'm just hoping that my souffle is cooked. 15 seconds to go. Souffles are out of the oven now, look. Oh, my gosh. It didn't cook. She's out of it. Yeah. Thirty seconds to go. Quick. Oh, my gosh. It didn't cook. Unfortunately, Dara's souffles looks oh, like right. they're... Yeah, they're not rising. She's out of it. Yeah. Come on, finish your touches. Oh, my God. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop, guys. Hands in the air. Good job. The judges now take one last look to decide the top three dishes. The winner of this mystery box challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. Don't be upset. Just fill up the mix next time. Okay. Mold half full, and it'll mm -hmm. cook twice as quick. OK. Relax. Hold okay. well on. Who here thinks they've got the best dish? Love it. There were three standout dishes that we want to take a second look at. The first dish, this was smart in a very creative way. This individual is a top contender. Second time in the top three. Please step forward. Troy, congratulations. Troy's just always up there. He's been in the top three like a thousand times. Right. Describe the dish, please. Well, you have a snail chowder with herb oil and baked eggplant peels. Visually, it looks delicious. It's rich, it's creamy. Love those eggplant chips. The snails aren't overcooked. Sometimes when they go inside a chowder, they get rubbery and a little bit chewy, but they taste delicious. Thank you. Mind blow. Great job. Thank well you very done. much. Seriously. Generally, with an eggplant, everyone's cooking the insides, right? Mm -hmm. What made you do this again? 
I think that the outside of the eggplant is more creative than a lot of people would think of. You're showing a ton of creativity, but also skill and knowledge of making a good soup. Thank you. Spot on. Great Thank job, Mike. Well, it's properly seasoned and it's very rich. Thank and you. And the snails have a nice kind of bite to them. Mm -hmm. The herb oil gives it a lift and flavor. It's a good soup. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Well done, Troy. I think that I do stand pretty high up there because I've never gotten any bad feedback from the judges. The second dish went in a direction that not everybody selected. It clearly looks like it comes out of a restaurant. Please step forward, Big Al. Describe it to me. It's a sticky toffee pudding with candied fennel, a Chantilly cream, and a fig lemon puree. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if there was more of the caramel, I would have written, like, stupendously incredible <laughs> yumminess. It's all delicious. The only thing I can say that I would change is just putting more of the toffee sauce over the top just so it sucks right. it up a little more right. like a sponge. Phenomenal. Thank you. Amazing job. Visually, uh, it looks beautiful. Why the fennel? Fennel is something that I really don't like, and I wanted to be creative with it. The texture inside is on the verge of a cupcake texture, because it's very light. The fennel doesn't work for me. However, trust me, technically, you've nailed it. In 60 minutes, Alexander, to see the confidence for you to attempt something as difficult as this, uh, I love it. Don't stop. Great job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Do a good job, man. For the third and final dish that we want to taste up here, this person took an ingredient from the mystery box, and it wasn't just the main protein that shined. Every component completely wowed us. This person may be small in stature, but they're clearly very big in talent. Please, step forward. Sarah. What's the dish? I made sweet fried sardines with a cabbage Brussels sprout fennel salad. So this is amazing to me because it is the most restauranty dish of all the dishes, I think. Like, when I think about Mediterranean flavors, it's all right here. It's all cooked perfectly. It's moist and sweet. You know how I like to eat sardines? How? Like this. Isn't that gross? You just ate a fish eye. I ate the whole head. How long did you fry them for? Um, four minutes each. Did you fry them one by one? Um, no, chef. All three of them together. Was that scary? No, chef. Did you burn yourself with the oil? No, chef. Are you afraid of the fryer? No, chef. Are you afraid of anything? Yes, chef. What are you afraid of? Clown. Clowns? How can you be afraid of clowns? They're creepy. Well, you're afraid of clowns, and I'm afraid of how good this dish is because it's really, really amazing. I don't even know how you come up with this stuff. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. So, visually, it looks beautiful. Who taught you how to cook like this? You're nine years of age. My grandmother owns a restaurant, and I, when I was, like, nine months old, I would come with my mom. The Brussels sprouts taste fragrant. Love the fennel, that cools it down. Sardines, delicious. Looks like grandma's passed off some of her magic. Here's the thing, you may be the smallest, maybe the youngest, but if I was standing behind you right now, I think I'd be pooing my pants. Brilliant. Oh, exceptional. Escargot coffee pudding mm -hmm. followed by these sardines. It's like three completely different worlds. I mean, it's perfect. Right. Tonight, three stunning dishes. Troy, Alexander, Sarah. You know only one of you 
will come through to the pantry for that huge advantage. The winner, the best dish of the night, was made by... You know, only one dish can be tonight's best rated dish. The best dish of the night was cooked by Sarah. Good job, Sarah. Well done. Good job, Sarah. Are you ready to receive your huge advantage? Yes, Chef. Let's go. Good job, young lady. Good job. Well done. Sarah is now in control of the elimination test. Come in, please, sir. After which at least two young home cooks will leave the competition. Nice, nice, nice. Right. Sarah, welcome to the Master Chef Pantry. In an ideal world, who would you like to see leaving the competition next? Alexander. Uh, oh. oh. Duh. Duh. <laughs> and Troy. And Troy. Wow. Very smart thinking. This next challenge focuses on what many professional chefs would say is their biggest weakness. The theme of tonight's elimination challenge is baking. Yeah. <laughs> For the first item, we have one of my favorites, a classic bakery treat that's been experiencing a boom in popularity over the last few years. I'm talking about cupcake. The cupcake. The perfect treat, but very hard to make correctly. The next option can test even the most skilled baker. It's a classic favorite. Delicious, but complex. I'm talking about the layer cake. If I was looking to send someone home, this is for sure what I would be making them make. Very easy to eat, but definitely hard to make. The third and final option, Sarah, is a pastry. The most amazing, delicious, gorgeous, Fruit tarts. You have that sweet pastry at the bottom, your pastry cream, and it's topped all these wonderful berries. Sarah, since you won the mystery box challenge, your first advantage is that you won't be baking in this elimination challenge. <laughs> that means you're safe from elimination. Sarah, it's time for you to choose which one of these three difficult desserts are you going to get your fellow competitors to make. Is it cupcakes, layered cake, or the fruit tart? I choose. A little present for you. <gasps> gummy bears! Oh, my God. There's a lot of gummy bears. <laughs> Whoa. That's right, everybody. Because Sarah won the Mystery Box Challenge, she is now safe from elimination and has advanced to the top six of MasterChef Junior. And I'm sorry to say, at the end of this challenge, two of you will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen. Sarah chose... a layer cake. I don't know how she knew that I suck at layered cakes. Maybe she just got lucky, but... I'm pretty nervous. Better pack up my bags, because this is the death of me. We want one layer cake from you, and that layer cake must have at least three layers to it. I don't really know how to make cakes. I don't like cake. I don't like to associate myself with it. Layer cake looks easy, but it's really not. They're hard to frost. They're hard to cool off. There's so many things that can possibly go wrong. You'll have 90 minutes to bake us a stunning layered cake. Your 90 minutes starts now. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Where is the vanilla? Does anybody know where the vanilla is or the sugar? I need four sticks plus a little bit. I just can't believe she chose layer cakes. I've never cooked one. So I have to make three times a batter, three times a frosting, and three times a decoration on it. I really don't think I can pull this off in the amount of time I have. I need more baskets. Oh, my God. Hey, guys, where's the baking soda and baking powder? Well, when I was 10, 10, just telling you, I was 10, 
I made my mom's wedding cake. If I can do something like that, I know I'm OK. Oh, my god. This is so heavy. Push, push, push. Come on. <sighs> Jack, you manage? Come on, buddy. There you go. Big one tonight. A stunning, delicious layered cake. The jeopardy is within the first 20 minutes. You have got to get that sponge in the oven. I think this is the one that can screw everybody up. I mean, they're so technical. This is a big deal. I'm going to go for all chocolate, basic three layers. I was talking to Gordon Ramsay, and he said that he loves chocolate. So I think it's going to be fine. I'm making a lemon layered cake. The key to making sure your cake doesn't break is handling it carefully and making sure it's moist but firm. I know that my cake is going to be a lemon cake, but I'm not 100% sure what my frosting will be. So why do you think Sarah chose the layer cake? Sarah's strategy was that Alexander will take a cake like this, and because of his ambition and his skill, he'll mm -hmm. overcomplicate it and fall. She wants to take him out, but so does everybody else, because he is really good. is not a long time for a layered cake, especially when you want to take your time to make it look good. Ugh, yeah, it's just not easy at all. Oh, shoot. I actually screwed up a bit, and I misplaced my flour for powdered sugar, so I have to start over. Alexander seems frazzled. Wow. It's the cup measurer. His confidence is stirred. Exactly. He took a big hit with that mistake. I don't know if he can come back. minutes to go. Try to get that sponge yeah. in the oven as quick as you can. In this challenge, Mystery Box winner Sarah has assigned the junior home cooks the task of baking the most amazing three-layer cake. Sarah is now safe and automatically has moved on to the top six. Alexander, how's it going? Um, I'm a little bit behind on time because the first cake batter I had I mistaked my flour for powdered sugar. No, really? Yeah, so I've really got to go fast. So Is that going to give you enough time to get the cakes cooled down? I'm going to toss them in the blast chiller and hope for the best, I guess. So Sarah chose the layer cake because she wanted to get you out of here. I'm just focusing on getting this done. My plan's working because Alexander doesn't even have his cake in. I think it was a smart choice on her behalf. All right, well, good luck. Those sponges have to get straight in the oven. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Don't worry, don't worry. Look, I'm here to help you. Please don't get upset. <gasps> hey, don't worry. Let's start again, shall we? I think you've got to cream the butter first, the sugar, the butter, then the eggs and the flour. What, what way are you making it? I just did it back. Don't you worry, my darling. Let's start again. Now, let's uh, let's get this going. We can do this, OK? We've still got time. Butter first. We're going to cream that, yeah? Then after that, we're going to add our eggs. And then we'll sift the flour and add the flour. OK, my darling? Good girl. So get your flour ready. I'll turn this on. So we get that butter really nice and whipped, OK? There we are. We can pull this back. Good girl. Now, tie your apron, big deep breath. Butter's on. In one minute from now, you add your sugar. And then you add your eggs. You may be a couple of minutes behind. That's nothing. You back with me? Yes. You can do this. Yeah. I know you can. Thank Let's you. go. Steam. Jack, what's smoking in there? What are you doing? That's the uh, sugar. I what? thought you were on fire. Why is it uh, smoking like that? Because it is. Why? It's going to cool down. Don't worry. So what are you going to do with that? Make it into a meringue with all that you butter. You're going to make a meringue? Meringue buttercream frosting. Meringue buttercream frosting. Wow. It's a lot of butter, Jack. Who's going to eat all that butter? Me, hey. Gordon, and Graham. Leave some, because if you eat it all, you're, you're going to get, like, diabetes or something. Yeah. All right. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. 15 minutes to go. Come on. Your sponges should be out the oven by now. You're going to start thinking, filling, and assembling them. This thing is almost bigger than me. All right, Sarah. Yes. I'm coming up. OK. Uh, right, how are you feeling? Good. May I have a gummy bear, please? Thank you. 
So you had a target on Alexander's back tonight. How's your plan working? It's working out pretty good. Oh, Alexander's sponge is out. That's late. Better late than never. His he looks look a happy. little light. It does look a bit light. There's hardly any color on that. Well spotted. Yeah, I think you took him out too early. Who do you think is going to be in the top two? Gavin and Jack. Jack is one of my biggest competitors, and if I make him think that I'm his friend, then it'll just be that much easier to wipe him out. Jack, gummy beer? Oh, yeah, sure. I got it. Good job. Mm. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. You really do that? Those are good. Yes. Pass me the gummy bear, please. Any color. Guys, less than five minutes to go. You got to start pulling it together now. Finish your frosting, final touches. Please, I'm praying to God that I've got enough frosting. For me, this is the most exciting part. This is the part where they start to really use their artistic flair. Um, Dara, I mean, she's making the most amazing spiced chocolate. Really? It's spiced with cayenne. So it's almost like a Mexican chocolate. Yeah, like a Mexican chocolate cake yeah. with a delicious ganache. She's on a mission. I mean, yeah. I think that disappointment on the souffle. Yeah, not rising. Tonight is her comeback dish. She's got something to prove now. Gavin is very, very confident about the chocoholic. He seems to be working pretty efficiently. How many different types of chocolates does he have in there? It sounds crazy. Every kind of chocolate we have in the pantry, he's putting in that cake. 60 seconds to go. Come on. Find a way to make it look beautiful, guys. Make your layer cake stand out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, stop. Hands in the air. <sighs> wow. That was tough. I can see that you've all made a very valiant effort. Well done. Right now, it's time to see how they taste. First up, Alexander. I'm kind of freaking out. My cake looks like a five-year-old could have made it. I think that this is possibly one of the worst things that I've ever baked in my life. What do you have here? It's a lemon cake with a lemon curd filling, meringue frosting, and garnished with a bit of blueberry and raspberry puree. What's this stuff running out of the side? Um, it's my lemon curd. Your lemon curd? But your lemon curd's supposed, supposed to be in the middle, right? Right. Are you disappointed? I'm not happy how my presentation came out, mm. but I think that um, the taste will run through. I have to push really hard. It's generally not a good sign, but we'll keep optimistic. What should it look like? Um, the cake should be light and airy, and the layer should be even. Light and airy? I think that it might be a bit dense. I can feel just by the weight of it that it's a little bit dense. definitely undercooked. There's no doubt about that. As far as the structure goes, you can tell that you know what you're doing, but it's not your best work. Thank you. That's the first time in this competition, young man, I've seen you struggle. Sometimes when you're not that good at doing something that you want to be brilliant at, then don't overcomplicate it. Just do something plain and do it beautifully because the sponge is too dense. The frosting doesn't work, and unfortunately, the dough texture is like crunchy. What a shame. Thank you. It's her lucky day, because I could be going home on this layered cake. That's the first time in this competition, young man, I've seen you struggle. Sometimes when you're not that good at doing something that you want to be brilliant at, then don't overcomplicate it. What a shame. Thank you. I'm sure that I'm going home. My only hope is that somebody screwed up bigger than I did. All right, next up, please, Dara. Wow, that looks beautiful. It's a chocolate cake with a spiced cayenne pepper ganache. How many layers? Three. Remind me, sixth grade? Yes. How confident are you? Um, I'm really confident. What do you think? I like it. Wow. It smells awesome. 
I can't believe you could pull this off at like 12. Great use of that spice. It just accents the chocolate. The raspberry helps bring in some of that floral. It's just perfectly nuanced. I think that you hit it out of the park with this one. Good job. Thank you. Did Graham like it? Yes. Graham likes cake, though. <laughs> Doesn't everyone love cake? I love your cake. This is delicious. This idea of doing the spiced chocolate, it's brilliant. Very brave, but really good sensibility because, you know, sometimes things like this can get out of balance. And the great thing about this cake, it has balance. I am very, very impressed. Thank you. That's so good. Next up, please, Kaylin. Describe to me what we have. I have made a vanilla cake with a mixed berry buttercream. Did you have any problems with it? Because it looks, the I shape is, you know, kind of have a problem abstract. With it. When I was taking out of the pan, it accidentally landed on the ends of the other cakes. Uh -huh. So I tried to, like, take it out, and it just, like, crumbled into a bunch of pieces. All right. This is my first time cooking a three-layer cake, so it's kinda... First time cooking a layer cake? Yeah. What'd you think? I think it's pretty good for a first time. So the actual sponge cake is really dense. I don't know if you aerated it enough. You know, almost like when you make a whipped cream and it froths up and... Mm -hmm. So that's why I think you get some of these bits where it almost looks moist, you know, and dense going through. Here's the thing. You know those visual impacts of layer cakes have to have that wow factor. And yours doesn't look like it's up there with the best of the best, right? Mm-hmm. So the icing, there's not enough sugar in there. Now, I saw you struggling to spread it because it's so firm. The sponge, um, it's a little bit flowery because it's slightly undercooked. However, you didn't give up. You stood in there. You held your own. It's a gallant effort. Thank you. I'm feeling disappointed in myself because I think I could have done a little bit better. Gavin. What do we got here? A uh, chocolate delight. Uh, at the bottom, it's a chocolate layer, and then chocolate icing, and then chocolate layer, and then chocolate icing, and then chocolate layer, and then chocolate icing. You know what I like to do sometimes when I was a kid? Yeah. I would go like, I wouldn't want to cut the cake more and more because my mom would be watching. So I just go like on the inside <laughs> like this and yeah. keep on taking out pieces and kind of oh, like yeah. hollow it out. Because this is where all the good stuff is anyway. Yeah, I don't tell my mom, but sometimes I do that too. And then you keep on hollowing it out. Yeah. Make a little wall here, no one knows, and you wind up eating the whole cake on the inside. <laughs> it's definitely a fat kid trick, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fat kid. It's really, really good. I think that the uh, frosting or ganache, whatever you want to call it, is tremendous. Did you try how good your cake is? I didn't try my cake, but right. okay. Describe it to me. Wow. <laughs> What's the one word that comes to your mind right away when you put that in your mouth? Stupendous. I was thinking moist. Well, let's go with stupendous. <laughs> good job, yeah. Good job. Thank you so much. <laughs> Troy, please come up. Explain to me what we have. Well, it's a lemon cake with cream cheese frosting and candied lemon slices. Well, I like that you showed yourself. It's nice and sunny. A little sweet for me. The problem, though, is that it's like you're skimping on the frosting. Yeah, I kind of ran out. Thank you. Jack, let's go, big man. Hawaiian Jack. Wowza. What is that beauty? This is a vanilla cake with a meringue buttercream frosting. Visually, it's got that kind of ooh, intriguing look. Yay. Were you nervous about trying to produce a layered cake? Um, I was a little nervous, but I am feeling pretty confident. Well, and so you should be. OMGD. Do you know what that means? No. Oh, my goodness, delicious. Oh, yay. Oh, yes. Sponge is exquisite. Thank you. It's light, absolutely incredible. I mean, you are not phased at all, are you? 
No. You're not feeling homesick, are you? Uh, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Who do you miss the most? I miss my dad the most. Uh, do you know who I miss the most? Who? My son, Jack. He cooks like an angel. But when I dig into something that delicious, it makes me feel less homesick. Thank you. Great job. Yes. Last up, Sophia. Seeing my cake, I'm embarrassed. I hope that I never have to make a cake ever again in my life. <laughs> OK, tell me about the cake. It's a chocolate cake huh? with strawberry and raspberry buttercream. If you had just got the buttercream around it, was it just hard to spread because of the consistency of the buttercream? Yes. What do you think? Not, not good. There's not many layers. They all kind of got mushed together. Yeah. The icing, it's a little too buttery. Maybe a little cream cheese would have given it a little bit more of that tartness, would have also made it easier to spread. So a little bit of technical errors. Thank you. Right, Sophia. So the oven must have been a little bit too high because you've got a crispy edge right. to your sponge. Yes. You know, laid cake, souffles, desserts, the chemistry. And it's so regimental, you can't afford to have one gram of anything out of sink. But, young lady, I'm amazed that you got what you did out in that short period of time. And well done for bouncing back. Thank you. Thank you. All of you did an amazing job, let me tell you. That is one of the most difficult tests you'll ever have. Great job. Obviously, there were some better than others. And right now, we need a moment to make some very difficult decisions. Excuse us. Honestly, Dara, incredible. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, Jack's, how light it is, Gavin's, the flavor. You OK, right? We're not going home. We're not going home. You're not going home. Alexander, it's just one mistake. Okay? Did. Amazing. I mean, nothing good about it. Yeah, there was. Yes, there was. was. I really want to see Alexander go home. We've become great friends, but he's tough competition, and I think I can make it to the finals. All of you, please come down to the front. Thank you. Now you know this is a competition and sadly we have to say good night there were two standout cakes tonight that really were phenomenal congratulations Gavin and Dara you two have the best cake of this evening congratulations on making it into the final six please join Sarah on the balcony well done This is as hard for us as it is for you all. Only three of you five can move on tonight. Jack, can you please step forward? Tonight, you didn't have the best cake, but you still baked a great cake. Congratulations, you've made it to the top six of Junior Master Show. Being ahead of Alexander was really an amazing feel, and I'm very proud of myself. All four of you, well done. Sadly, there are only two of you that are going to move forward to the next stage and join the four on the balcony and become America's top six junior master chefs. I don't think that I should go home. I think that Alexander and Troy made mistakes in both their cakes, so I feel like that Alexander's days are numbered. I just don't feel like I'm ready to go home because at this point, this is like the only thing that I've really screwed up big time on, and I'm just really sad. The two of you who are moving on are All four of you, well done. Sadly, there are only two of you that are going to move forward to the next stage and join the four on the balcony and become America's top six junior master chefs. The two of you who are moving on 
Ja. Troy and Alexander. Please say goodnight to Kaylin and Sophia. Both of you, come up here and say goodnight, please. Well done, ladies. Come on, you. Huh? Hey, well done. Well done, well done. Good girl. Come here, you gorgeous. Oh dear, oh dear. And the mission. <laughs> Sophia, great job. You missed him really good. You guys did great stuff. Right, Caitlin, I have to ask you, who do you think is going to win the first ever Junior Master Chef? Darren. Sophia, who do you think is going to win? Alexander. Thank you. Good night. Keep all those aprons. I wanted to win Junior Master Chef, but that's okay. Everybody is going home except for one. I had a great time, and I'm never going to forget this experience. Technically and visually, the young lady is pretty phenomenal. I'm blown away. Great job. Thank you. I feel like that making a whole new batch of friends is really good for me, because now we all share, like, the same love for food. Oh, man. Even now it's my dream to win Junior Master Chef. Still, I think it's pretty amazing to be only 11 and to have cooked in the Master Chef kitchen. Is this restaurant quality? Yes. I agree. I want to cook even more and maybe come back next year, maybe try and win this. I'm the only girl who poured completely on whipped cream on Chef Ramsay's head. Next time on Master Chef Junior. One of LA's finest restaurants recruits a new breed of chefs. The most grueling challenge, the restaurant takeover. The junior contestants run the kitchen. Get this on the plate, let's go. I'm trying to do what you messed up. In an intense team challenge. That is embarrassing, get rid of it. Red team, blue team, listen to me. Come on, get out of your comfort zone. Yes. How about yes, yes, chef? Yes, chef? Yes, chef! They'll get the culinary experience of a lifetime. I cannot believe how crazy it is. Beautifully done. Thank you, chef. And the diners are in for the shock of their lives. That's right, Master Chef Junior contestants. One potato, two potato.